Okay, so we need to add filtering now. So let's go into our code and open up the homepage. And we're gonna add another div at the very top. And this is where we're gonna add all of our... So we'll go ahead and add a CSS class right now so we can style that. Now for the filter itself, we're gonna use a input here of type text. And let's go ahead and add the placeholder text as search for a country. And there's our little search. Now in Angular, you can, you can listen to the input events using input like this. However, there's a better way of using something called ng model. And this syntax represents two-way binding. So in our TypeScript, we'll add a new variable called search filter. And it'll just be a string. And then we can add that here. And it's a good thing I have syntax highlighting because it's red, because currently our app module doesn't have access to the forms module. So we'll need to add that. And that comes from Angular Forms. And inside of our imports, we'll add the forms module. This way, we'll have the ability to use ng model. And what ng model will do is that every time the value inside of input changes, it's bound to search filter, our variable, which means our component class has access to it. Now currently, countries is an observable, and we're accessing it through a async pipe. And I was looking into how to add filters and stuff, and it got really complicated, as we'll need to create more pipes, and then in our HTML, it'll just look ugly with multiple nested pipes. So instead of doing anything fancy, we'll just do a normal subscribe here, and we'll set a variable that we'll have to create to the response. The variable that we're gonna create is just gonna be called source, and is a country array. So we'll do source here. Now this dot country is no longer useful because we have a subscription now instead of an observable. So we'll get rid of that. And we'll also get rid of the observable here. I will cause a problem in our HTML. The variable no longer exists. So what we could do here is change this to source and get rid of the async pipe. And everything is still the same. But currently our text filter doesn't work. So what I decided to do was create a getter called countries, and it's gonna return this.source, except this time we'll filter it and check if it matches the search filter or if it includes it in the name string. Now this is potentially unsafe, so we'll need to add some protection. So I'll do this.source just in case that there's a source. And then inside the filter, I'm also gonna check if we have a search filter available and return the country if the search filter is potentially an empty string. And with this getter available, we can now change this source to countries because it's a variable that we have access to. And now in our app, we can filter by something. So if I type in Africa, we'll get that. If I type in African, we'll get it. And then if we backspace, we'll get everything back. It's a little annoying because it's not K or it's case sensitive, so I'm just gonna add two lowercase to both of the strings here. So it'll be case insensitive. But now that that's working, we can focus on styling this. So I'm gonna create another div with a class name of search filter, because in addition to this input, we want the icon of FA search from Font Awesome. And I believe we want the shadow from earlier, so let's add that too. All right, the icon shows up. But the CSS is kind of, so let's add our styles for country filters. Let's first add the spacing, which will have two rem top and bottom. And then remember that our spacing on the sides is one rem for mobile and then five rem for desktop size. Now let's go into the search filters itself. And first I want to get rid of all the default styles of the input. So I'll do background color of inherit and border none. I want some spacing between the icon and the search, so I'll add 0.5 rem for that. And I'm not sure if that's the right font size. There we go. So I have to apply one rem to the input itself. Go ahead and add the theme, which we need the host context, which is not a surprise, but we'll be using background color and color. There's gonna be one new thing though, and that's we need to change the placeholder color as well. And the design file gave us a color for the light input, but not so much for the dark input. So we'll just use the dark text, which is white. 
So now padding is missing from the search filter, so we need to add that. And let's also add rounded corners. And our search filter is basically complete. Except there's this weird thing for the media queries. On mobile, they want it to be full width, but then on desktop, we want it to be like much smaller. And I chose 33% for that as an arbitrary number. It doesn't really have much significance, but I think it looks about right. Now we can move on to the dropdown component. And I'm going to generate a new component for the dropdown just because it's going to be a bit more involved. It wouldn't make much sense to live inside of the home component like this input. After the dropdown is generated, we can just add it here into the country filters. And we have dropdown works. We'll get to it in a little bit. But first, it would be a good idea to add the region options because we're going to do the same logic inside the home component as we did with the search filter. And I'm going to set the region options variable to that constant that we created, as well as creating a variable for a search filter, which we'll use similar to how we used it in the search input. And by that, I mean we're going to filter the countries based on the region filter. This time we're going to check the region property to see if it includes the region filter. Otherwise, we'll just return whatever that item is. We're not going to have to lowercase these strings because if you notice in our region options here, we're explicitly setting the specific strings so there won't be any room for error. And with that, let's open up our dropdown. Well, let's first open up our TypeScript component. We're not going to need constructor or ng on init because this is going to be a very simple component. So you get rid of those. All this component is going to do is take inputs and outputs. So first, let's add a placeholder text as well as options. And that should be enough to start doing the HTML. So we can go in here and get rid of the dropdown works. And we'll replace it with a div that will just give a class of dropdown. And inside that, we're going to have a label where we're going to show the placeholder. Now this dropdown also needs an icon and the icon that is chosen is going to be font awesome chevron down and then finally we'll have an unordered list for our dropdown options which we could loop over all the options inside of the options that's inputted and I'll put them in this list item. All right in our home component let's go ahead and add the, those inputs. So first we need a placeholder and this is just going to say filter by region. Secondly we need to send the options and this is going to be the region options. And there they are. Now it's not super pretty but I mean we'll, we'll get to that. The next thing that I want to do is add support for two-way binding. Just like how we did with the search filter. Except this one's going to be linked to region filter. And I'm just going to give it the name of value. I'm not going to save because things will break. So the way two-way binding it works is that the input is the same as everything else. We'll set it as a string, but we also need to specify an output. And this is going to be called value change, just so it matches the name of value. It's of type event emitter, and make sure that this comes from Angular Core and not Protractor, or else you'll be confused like I was. Let me resize this a little bit. There we go. That's better. And you do need to give it a default value of a new event emitter, just so that it works. But then finally in our home component, you can finally save this. And now we need to add the ability to interact with this. So the options aren't hiding and also clicking on these don't really do anything. And that logic will live inside of dropdown component. But for the showing and hiding of it, we're gonna use a show options Boolean flag and toggle it with a method on top of the component. That way in the HTML, we can just add a click method here to call toggle options and also hide the unordered list behind an ng if of show options. So, so now you can toggle it with pressing the button or not the button, the label. And finally, we need a method here to actually emit the event. So I'm just gonna call it select It'll take a string and it'll call this.value change and then it'll emit that value. And then the last thing that we need to do in here is inside of this list item, we could add the click method and we'll call select, but we also need to pass the option. So now let's test the functionality. So we click on Africa, we'll get all the African 
countries, and then Americas will change it, and then so on and so on. Now, of course, the last thing we need to do is style this because it's not quite up to standard. And just to make our lives a little easier, I'm going to set the default of show options to true. So in our drop down component, we're going to follow the, the same pattern. So the root class, as well as the host context for both theme modes and the themes, we're going to select both the drop down, so the entire container, as well as the options and set the appropriate background color. The text color should inherit from the body, so we don't need to add that. Yeah, that looks a little better. First we'll add the spacing. And the margin top only exists in mobile view, because in desktop view, we're gonna have it evenly spaced in something like a flex container. Speaking of flex containers, I also wanna evenly space the label and also the icon. So we'll add that. And now the hard part, which is styling the options. Let's do the easy thing, which is list style of none. So what we actually want to do with the, the drop down options is that we want this not to push down everything else, but to sit on top of the page, basically. And for that, we'll need position relative on the container. So then we can do position absolute on the options itself. Which of course it looks weird because we need to add the Z index and I'll just say 10. But we also need to specify the top and left so it knows where to sit. And for the top, 100% is referring to the containers or the parent containers height. So we're adding an extra 10% so it just sits a little bit lower so there's a clear separation. We'll also need the width. So uh, looks a bit better. I think each individual list item needs some padding on it of its own, so I'll say 0.5 rem, so not too much, but just enough. And lastly, let's round off the corners of the drop down as well as the options of 0.25 rems. I think we're missing the shadows, so we can just go in here and add the shadow class to both the drop down as well as the options, just so it pops a little bit more. And let's see if it works. So that works. And it looks pretty good on in light mode as well. So the only real thing that we need to fix is how it's being placed. And that could be accomplished by going to the home component SAS file and editing the country filters. We'll accomplish this by using display flex. We're gonna specify the flex direction based on the desktop or mobile view because in mobile we actually do want it to sit on top of each other and remember in angular we're using the shadow dom so these components are actually html elements so we can use that to specify the width respectively based on the size now this looks annoying that's because the size is not really accounted for but if we go into a real desktop view it actually looks pretty good and let's check mobile and they're stacked on top of each other which they're supposed to and even in light mode it looks great so there you have it we finished the countries app all the functionality is there we can filter as well as seeing an individual country and we also have the alternating themes all right i hope you all enjoyed this video series let me know if you actually want to see more design heavy type stuff because this is probably the most CSS I've written in a while. But yeah, consider subscribing, and I'll see you all next time.